So let's jump in and start the actual modeling. So I've brought in one of the columns and its pair of arches from the active document, the original document, just so you can see. We can take a look at this every once in a while. We've even brought in this material. You might recognize it if you did the beach rock tutorial. That's the same broken concrete material that we put on the beach rocks. Uh, and I just brought this in here so we can refer to it every once in a while. We can kind of see where we are in the steps. Now the first thing I want us to do is to think a little bit about scale. Now you don't need to worry about scale for this project or, or many others. However, we do want to think a little bit about scale here at the start because things like lighting and textures and other stuff do actually pay attention to scale, relative scale. And right now the default cube is two meters tall. So Blender works in meters. You can go over here if you really want to change it. You can go over to this little tab and open up units over here and change it from metric. But the default size of an object when you bring it in is roughly about two meters tall. It's exactly two meters for a cube. So two meters is six and a half feet, roughly. So this is a very big base of our column. If we start modeling just from here, by the time we get done, we're gonna have you know the mines of Moria or whatever. This is gonna be huge. So what we wanna do is start by shrinking this column down a little bit more to the size that we see here in the example model. Now we could do that right now in object mode by hitting the S key and scaling it. But we're gonna jump into edit mode anyway. And it's always a good idea when you're actually changing the geometry to like build a model. It's one thing if, you want, if you've imported a little table into your scene and it's about right, but it feels a little too big and you can just jump into object mode and squish it down a little bit to fit or whatever, a little prop or something. But in this case, we're actually starting the, to build the model. So it's really better to do those things in edit mode. So I'm gonna hit the tab key and jump into edit mode, especially since we're gonna be there anyway. I'm gonna hit the A key to select everything. Remember A selects everything. You can just click on a blank spot to deselect, A to select everything, and double tap A is another way to deselect everything. So those are all ways to do that. So I'm going to hit the A key, select all, and then I'm going to hit the S key to scale. And I'm going to scale this down. Instead of by moving the mouse, I want to actually do one actual number here, to one precise measurement here. I'm going to type in 0. 0.5, and then I'm going to hit enter or return, and that's basically just dropped the cube down by half, which means that we've quartered its volume. I'm going to go over here and hide our little spare there, hide our example, and go from there. Now I'm gonna hit the tilde key and f choose front or right or side or left, any view that will give us the orthographic side view. And you can come in here and see that the cube, everything that you make um, in Blender when the 3D cursor is on the world origin means that half of the object is gonna be below the floor. We don't have any floor yet, but it's gonna be right here where this red line is. That's that's the zero plane of the Z axis, right? So that's where you know the floor will be. So we wanna move this up out of the floor. So we're gonna do that precisely again, so we don't have to kind of eyeball it and zoom in and spend a bunch of time seeing if we got it right. We're gonna this time hit the G key. Remember G is grab, which is basically the same thing as move. So we're gonna move this, but we wanna tell it, we only want it to move in the Z direction. So I'm gonna hit G and Z, and that's gonna lock it in that blue axis. So it can only go up or down. And then we're gonna type in 0.5 again. And then what it's done is, and then don't forget your enter or your return or click. And that's gonna tell it that, yes, I'm happy with that move. And now it doesn't matter how far we zoom in, the bottom of that cube is sitting perfectly on that plane, on that red line, which is our 3D axis there. So I just use the middle mouse button to orbit out of that orthographic front view there. And now we're looking back into a perspective view and we've got our cube ready to go. So I'm gonna scooch in here to get it in a kind of a good place for the next few steps. And the very next thing we're gonna wanna do is push this face down. And because all we're really doing is changing this, we could scale it in one direction, we could type in S and Z and then squish it down, except it would pull it in both directions. So we would end up with it flowing off the floor again. So the easier way to do that is to make sure that we're in edit mode and face mode and click this little top face. And because we went to adding our little move gizmo over here, because we've got the gizmos turned on with the move gizmo, I've got that little blue arrow there, which means I can grab any one of these arrows and lock it into that direction, just like we did G and Z to tell it we wanted it to move in only the Z direction, the blue axis up and down. Here we can do that exact same thing just by clicking on this and just yanking on it. So I'm going to push it down now. I'm looking up in the upper corner. Look over there by where the file menu is, right in the upper left-hand corner there of the screen. You can see that as I move this, I'm moving those numbers down. I don't want you to worry about being super precise here, but I'm just putting it down to like roughly the negative 0.8 range. Like something like that is good. So I'm making this little pizza box here. And then we can see that that corresponds with 
this little slab right here. We've basically made this slab. And if yours is a little bit skinnier, a little bit taller, that's okay too. I just don't want it to be like wildly different scales. Our, everybody's columns are gonna be slightly different because we aren't typing in precise numbers and that's okay. Let me turn that back on here so we can see what the next step is. I'll show you the spare column. So we wanna make this chunk right over here. Actually, let me get into the shaded view there. I'm gonna make this piece, so we've, we've made this piece right here, and now we want the sides to slope in a little bit. We can do that quite easily, except we need to leave these edges right here. So we need these edges here, so I can't just pull it back up again and scale. If I were to do that, you can see what'll happen. I'll say, all right, all right well, I wanna pull it up to right about there, and now I'm gonna hit the S key and scale this inward. Well, the problem there is you can see it's, it's taking the slanted side all the way down to the corner, and we lose our little base down over there. So what we have to do in this case is leave these edges here, so so the way we do that is just extrude a new set of faces. And we do extrudes with the E key, as it is in a lot of software, just hit the E key. And you'll notice that we get the blue axis in there automatically, because the only way we can extrude in this mode is to go straight up here. So I'm just gonna push this straight up. That's that's about right. Something that looks, you know, looks roughly cube shaped again. Don't make it too tall, or your column will get too tall. Don't make it too low, or else the next couple of steps will look weird. So something like that, you know, basically making the whole thing uh, roughly cube shaped again. So I'm gonna click right there to set that move there. And now you can see I have all of those edges are still in place here and I have a new face. So there's, I'm not shrinking down over here anymore. I'm gonna be able to shrink up here. So in order to get these tapered sides, the easiest way to do that would be just to move our cursor off to the side. You notice when I'm doing things like a uh, scale or inset, I tend to put my cursor a, far, a little farther away because that gives you more room to kind of trombone your, your size there a little bit. If you do it when your cursor is super close, you don't have a lot of room to move because it's sort of going toward the origin point of the object. So I'll show you what I mean right here. I'm gonna click S right now, and you see how that big long dashed line over there, which means I've got lots of room here to maneuver that scale. If I were to do that same thing, really close here and hit S in here, then I'm, I don't have a lot of resolution, I guess is sort of the way to think about it, even though I'll just go ahead and do it right now though, with that little bit. Um, I don't, it's, it's, it, the movements are much more abrupt. If you give yourself a lot of room, then you can do much more sort of gentle moves a little bit farther out. That looks about right. Maybe I'll do that a little tiny bit more. I'll scale in a little bit more so that it's kind of, how, how do I look there? I think my original ones maybe tapered a little tiny bit more, but you know, you can sort of eyeball this one. Don't make it too pointy. If you get it like that, that's a little too pointy. And if it's like barely, tapered at all, then you're not gonna, what's the point, you know? So um, something like that looks about right. And then again, if you feel like, oh, it's still too high now, well, now I can grab this face and I can raise it or lower it, you know, because I'm not hurting anything else. All I'm doing is moving these four points here by grabbing this plane and moving it up and down. So you might say, well, maybe I might make it a little lower. I kind of like the way that looks. Okay, so that looks pretty good for our little base. Now, the next thing we want to do is inset this piece here. So see how it kind of squeezes in on itself and then it widens out again for this piece of trim. So we can do that pretty easily. I'm just gonna zoom back on over here and I'm in edit mode and in face select mode here. I'm gonna click on this top face and I'm gonna hit the I key to inset. Now there is a button, it's right over here, inset faces, but this is a super useful one and not hitting the I key, inset I, it's one key. You don't have to worry about a modifier, control or command or alt or whatever. Just hit the I key, boom. And you've got that inset function. Now inset, you can't go outward with the inset by default, but you can go inward quite easily. So you just move your cursor in like that looks pretty good, whatever you think. Again, you can sort of eyeball these. Don't make it too skinny to where you can barely see it. But again, if you go that small, it might look a little a little uh, you know, hourglass shape. So something like that looks pretty good. And then we're gonna go straight up from here. We're gonna hit the E key to extrude upward again. And now we can't extrude outward quite as well. So what we are going to do is create a new face by extruding it and then leaving it exactly where it is and then scaling that face. And I'll show you what I mean. Don't forget, this is an important place here to make sure that you've done this little step here. We wanna be able to snap to vertex and we want that vertex to snap, especially we're about to do it to, to scale. So, you know, rotate. I don't know if we ever rotate uh, snapping uh, in this tutorial, but we certainly are gonna move and scale things to the snapping, but have all three of them on. So vertex, move, rotate, scale, and then you'll be able to do this next step. So what I'm gonna do is hit the E key and then immediately hit the enter key or return key. And then I've just basically dropped a second face. I've copied basically that face on top and dropped it right where it is. So now I can change that face by hitting scale and I can move that face outward. Now I'm doing this in an exaggeration way to show you what's just happened here. So now I have that, right? I have uh, this new geometry underneath here that allows me to scale it outward. Let me undo that all the way back to before. Whoops, now I did my 
one step too far back. Okay, so now if I try to do that scale, this next step that we're going to do right now, we can see, oh, well, okay, it's that's that's cool. I like that it's kind of reversing that taper. Maybe you like that. Maybe when you're doing your own column someday, you'll make it look like that. But we want to keep this side vertical. And we can't keep that side vertical because we're trying to scale this face. So what we're doing now to fix it is adding a new face that we can scale. It'll leave these four corners alone. It'll drop another one right on top of it that we can then expand and scale. So I'll show you how this works. Hit the E key, hit the return key. We're all good to go. And now we're going to hold down the control key. We're going to hit the S key, sorry, to scale it. And then we're going to hold the control or command key on the Mac. And what we're going to do is come down here and touch that little corner right there. It would work with any of these corners, just whichever one of these corners we want. See what it's like snapping as soon as I touch that corner? As long as I'm holding down the control key, if I let up the control key, it goes away. But if I hold the control or command key down, it's snapping right to that corner. And we're taking that little face that we dropped on top of there and making it exactly as big as that plane below at the top of our little pyramid right there. And then all I need to do when I see that orange circle is click. And now I know that I've got that, that face aligned with that other one. So I've scaled it so that it's the same size as the face below it. And that's very handy. So now we can extrude again, and we're just going to push that up, you know, sort of eyeball it, make it about the same height as the other one. doesn't need to be perfect. And then the last step here is to hit that I key again, and we're going to extrude again. And again, you just sort of just eyeball it. Unfortunately, with this, with the, um, inset, you can't hold down the uh, controller command because it does this, which is actually kind of a cool little feature. It sort of does this little, allows you to kind of extrude at the same time as you're insetting, which is kind of cool. I mean, that, that looks kind of neat, but that's actually not what we're after. So in this case, we're just going to uh, inset it. If you needed to make it a perfect snap, you could basically do that same trick we just did, extrude, enter, and then scale that face down. And it would do the exact same thing, but we can just sort of eyeball it. That looks close enough to me. And I'm going to extrude that up a little bit. And so there we go. So now we have the top of our column. So we start these, this part over here as a separate piece that we'll add in and we'll do some other steps to it. We're going to come back in the next video and round over this edge and then add these faces. So that's the base of our column all set to go.